Hey everyone, this is the third, I hope of three, uh, videos on ionization energy. Um, and it's just going to be practice problems. So um, if you have not watched the previous two videos on general ionization energy trends and explanations, and then the video on pairing energy, uh, you should probably go back and watch those first, uh, unless you just feel ready and confident and want to jump right into the practice, okay? All right, so here we go. I'm going to give you three problems, uh, and after each, I want you to pause the video, try to write out an answer all the way out. Don't just, like, uh, think about it. Just actually write it out um, and get practice with answering these, okay? Um, I will mention that, in general, you should think about what models would be useful to draw, whether they are most probable distance models or electron configurations or uh, orbital diagrams, anything that helps, just write it out, okay? Um, and don't be, don't be concerned that you wrote out the wrong one. Like, write one out, see if it works. If it doesn't work, try a different one, okay? All right, uh, so this one says, what, why is the first ionization energy of neon greater than that of fluorine? Go ahead and pause the video, get your periodic table out, write out your answer, restart the video. Okay, here's the explanation. So um, I'm going to draw a most probable distance diagram uh, for this. Uh, neon has 10 protons. It has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 6. And let's see, that's neon. Actually, I want to scoot that over. So this is neon. And remember, the purpose of this, these little diagrams are that this is a distance graph, right? So this is a graph of the most probable distance the electrons are from the nucleus. Okay, so fluorine is going to have nine protons in its nucleus, and it's going to have the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Right? And then the electrons we're removing here uh, the electrons of interest are these last ones that get in here. All right. Okay. So now um, we go to Coulomb's law. And Coulomb's law says that there are two things that matter, right? Charge and distance. So let's deal with distance first here because it's the easier one. So this electron here in fluorine and this electron here in neon are both in a 2p orbital. So they're both 2p electrons. So the distance is roughly the same. Right? So the distance from the nucleus, um, it's about the same. The distance from the nucleus to that, um, to that 2p electron is about the same in both of these atoms because they're both 2p electrons. Right? So that takes care of distance. Now let's deal with charge. So what about charge? Char the bigger the charges, the stronger the attractive force. We're dealing with electrons out here, so this is a negative one in both cases. For neon, you have a charge of plus 10 on the nucleus, which is greater than the nuclear charge of fluorine, plus 9. So therefore, the greater nuclear charge uh, on neon um, is going to have a stronger attraction to those valence electrons, that makes it harder to remove. But when we say harder to remove, it requires more energy, I guess, is the, the trick. More energy, comma, harder to remove, all right? So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a model that helps us explain things, and we're looking at charge and distance from Coulomb's law, all right? So, um, Notice that a couple of things that don't matter. One of the things that does not matter is that neon has more electrons. Um, that, right? So we don't, we, we don't care about the other nine electrons for neon. We care about the interaction between the electron that's getting removed and the attractive force back to the nucleus. Now, sometimes the other electrons matter, as we saw with pairing energy, and that's fine. But here we're not, we're not this is following our normal trend. We're, actually, both of these electrons are paired. That doesn't matter. 
The only thing that matters is this attractive force between the nucleus and this outermost electron. The other thing that doesn't matter is that neon has what's known as a filled shell. In other words, it's 2s and 2p electrons are all full. It has that magic number of eight electrons. A lot of times, um, textbooks, to my great dismay, make this huge deal about it. Um, and it just doesn't, it's, it, you should think of filled shells as a symptom, not a cause. Okay. So like if you go to the doctor with a cough, uh, they're going to try to figure out why you have a cough, right? So the, the, it's the same thing with filled shells. The filled shells is like, oh, isn't that interesting? But the reason that neon's ionization energy is greater has nothing to do with the, that 2p6 configuration. It has to do with the interaction between that positive nucleus and that outermost electron. All right. All comes down to Coulomb's law. Great. Okay. Let's do another practice problem. So why is the first ionization of energy of, of lithium greater than that of sodium? All right. Pause the video, write out your answer, and then restart. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start by doing a most probable distance diagram for lithium. It's 2s1 and another one for sodium. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have the worst time with that. 2p6, and then you got a 3s1 out here. All right. So again, we're going to apply Coulomb's law, charge and distance. The distance is very clearly different a 2s electron versus a 3s electron. But the charge on the nucleus is much greater for sodium as well. So it would seem that that would contradict things. So what we do here to try to deal with this is that you have to remember that this 3s electron is not only experiencing the attractive force of the nucleus, it's being repelled by all these core electrons. And instead of trying to like make arguments about, well, how much do the core electrons repel and blah, 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 which in later courses, we'll get into that. But for now, we're going to take a simpler course and we're going to say, all right, we're going to lump together the nucleus and the core electrons. And as you'll recall, we call this effective nucleus. We're going to create what we call an effective nucleus. Okay. And again, if you're unclear on this, this is back in the first video on, on this, in this, <laughs> this three part series that didn't mean to be three parts anyway. So, and then we're going to lump together our, uh, for sodium, those are the core electrons that becomes our effective nucleus for uh, sodium. I can't spell. Okay, anyway. So now I'm going to redraw this off to the side here. Go away. Okay. So lithium now will be plus one. Why is it plus one? Each of these electrons has a negative one charge. Three minus two gives us positive one. But we still have that 2s electron out here. For sodium, there's 10 electrons here in the core. So 11 minus 10 is plus one. But we have that 3s electron way out here. Okay, now we've got an apples to apples comparison, right? Both of these charges are plus one, but the distance is much greater between the effective nucleus, which is located at the nucleus, and those outermost electrons. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to write this one out, but um, no, I better write it out. Okay, so what we're trying to get at is um, both lithium and sodium have an effective nuclear charge. of plus one. However, the distance to the outermost electron is greater. Oh, now I have no room. is greater for sodium. So it is easier to remove it requires less energy. Okay. You can also state it in the other way. 
the distance for the lithium from the nucleus to the 2s for lithium is shorter and therefore it has a greater ionization energy it requires more force to be applied more energy to remove that closer electron okay either one's fine all right so that is lithium and sodium one more that i'd like you to try this one is a little tricky so why does it take more energy to remove an electron from an na plus ion than it does from a neutral neon atom all right pause the video give it a try Okay, again, this one's kind of tricky, um, and it bothers people. But again, if you'll if you'll draw the diagrams, I think it really helps a lot. Okay, so one S two. Oh, sorry. Um, haha. So so let's back up. Sodium plus is one S two two S two two P six. Right. Normally it would be three three S one, but it's a Na plus, which means remember it's lost an electron, right? Losing that electron brings its electron configuration down to 2p6. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. What about neon? Well, neon has plus 10 in the nucleus for its 10 protons. And it is also 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 5, 6. All right. So now this is something a little different, right? Because we have the exact same electron configuration. The only difference, they're both 2p6, the only difference is the, is the charge on the nucleus, right? And, you know, you could drop this into effective nuclear charge, and that would be totally fine. I think it's easier here to just leave it alone, because sometimes people get confused on how to do the effective nuclear charge for ions, because you try to do the atom and then back up, and then it doesn't, it doesn't really work out. So the effective nuclear charge on sodium is actually plus 9 here, right? So it's, it's, um, it's a little goofy. So it's probably better to just leave this in the in the regular picture without dropping into effective nuclear charge. There's not a reason to do it. We're not comparing up and down on the periodic table. They're, they're already apples to apples in terms of the electron configuration. All right, so in other words, the only thing that matters here is that that positive 11 on sodium plus is bigger than the positive 10 on neon, all right? The distance is the same. So again, charge and distance. Distance to that outermost electron for both cases is exactly the same. I mean, not exactly. It's more or less the same because they're both 2p electrons, all right? But the the sodium has a greater nuclear charge than does the neon. That greater nuclear charge is going to apply more force and require more energy to overcome, um, to overcome that attractive force, okay? Um, again, these kind of bother folks, but if you'll, if you'll just draw the diagrams, I think that you'll find, and then apply charge and distance, I think you're going to find the most of the time it's going to work out, okay? All right, um, there is a practice problem on pairing energy back in the pairing energy video, which is part two, so I'm not going to do another one here, okay? All right, I hope this was helpful. Please leave a comment um, if you have any questions or if there's anything else that you uh, find lacking here. Um, and otherwise, get in touch with questions, and I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.